Remember, Victor Navors, did we know that the real incident was way more unbelievable than the real person, Mr. Mehran Karimi Naziri, an Iranian who inspired this whole story, stayed in the airport for almost 18 years. The feel-good movie directed by Steven Spielberg had lots of things adapted just for the film. Even when the movie was released in the year 2004, Mr. Naziri was still staying in the airport. It is believed that Mr. Nazri did not even see the movie while he was the inspiration for the whole movie itself. There are lots of similarities and differences between the real incident and the movie. Well, let's see what the movie and the real story has to say. Mr. Viktor Naworski in the movie, who was from airport and was not allowed to enter the New York City. Well, in real story, with Mr. Mehran Karimi Nazuri, that was not the case. In 1977, the Shah of Iran, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, faced a lot of protests against him. During this battle, lots of Iranians were given the refugee status by the United Nations High Commissioner of Refugees, which allowed the residence for them in many European countries. Mr. Nazuri claimed that he is such a refugee. Since Mr. Nazuri's mother was British, he stayed in Britain till 1986. In 1988, when he planned to move from Britain to France, he claimed that he is a refugee, which in later investigations was believed that he was never expelled from Iran in the first place. Also, when he reached France, he said that his bag was stolen and all his documents were gone and he failed to produce the immigration documents which made the French police to arrest him. Spielberg found the story so interesting and just took that as an inspiration and made a feel-good, positive movie out of it. After being arrested by French police, Mr. Nasseri was released. As it was legal for him to be inside the airport and was not allowed to get into the city. That is how Mr. Nasseri started staying in the departure lounge of Terminal 1 in Charlie du Goulet Airport in France. Mr. Naziri tried to get the documents from Belgium as a refugee many times, but the authorities needed him to be present there for the documents and so they refused. In 1995, the Belgium authorities granted permission for him to travel to Belgium for the documents only if he agreed to live under supervision, but Mr. Naziri refused it. At one point of time, both France and Belgium granted residence to him, but he refused and insisted in British citizenship, which became a huge frustration for a lot of people involved. Also, he changed his name to Sir Alfred Mehran, for which he had no proof at all. Steven Spielberg bought the rights for the story for 250,000 US dollars, but eventually he did not use it. Instead, he just used it as an inspiration for his story, which made the movie much more unique. Mr. Nazari stayed at the airport from 26 August 1988 to July 2006 for almost 18 complete years. In July 2006, he was hospitalized and his living place in the airport terminal was removed. In 2007, he was transferred to the charity center and ever since 2008, he has been living under Paris shelter. Mr. Nazari's autobiography, The Terminal Man, was published in 2004 and there has been lots of other books and documentaries based on Mr. Nazari's real life. Even when the movie Terminal got released, he was still living in the airport and he was not allowed to watch it. Mr. Nazari said this to an interviewer. There have been a lot of people who have stayed in the airport for quite some time. But what made Mr. Nazari's story so special was he stayed at the airport for 18 years. In fact, the real version of the terminal is quite different and interesting too. If you do want to hear more interesting stories and videos like this, please do subscribe to DNA and don't forget to click the bell icon so that you don't miss out any new story that we post.